<laughs> good morning. Good morning. It is 10 a.m. and you know what time it is. It is time for the Devo and Chris Joe show. Welcome, everyone. What's going on, my guy? I can't complain. Can't complain, man. Have me a nice, solid weekend. How was your weekend? What you got done? Uh, you know, uh, how was your weekend, man? Now, I can't complain. Uh, you know, got some things done. Uh, had a couple group sessions. Hung out with the girls a little bit. Uh, you know, so got some daddy daughter time in. You know, that that's always good. And then, uh, you know, we watch we watch the game. We we watched the uh, uh, the Virginia game. So uh, we'll we'll kind of dive into that a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, the whole game was not good for us. You know, at, you know, towards the end of it. Um, we started hitting some shots, you know, we put the press on it, it kind of, uh, rattled them a little bit, started turning the ball over, um, and, and turning them, them into some buckets. But overall, we were never really in the game. Uh, you know, from the start, Virginia did a great job of, uh, picking apart the zone, getting the ball in the middle, um, playing inside out, you know, they hit a bunch of wide open corner threes. Uh, when those weren't open, they did a good job of, you know, finding the high low and, and the big man finishing over top. Um, Kiki Clark in the middle, I thought he was super effective um, just making decisions. Uh, he, he's the guy that if you play off him, he could hit the jump shot being a guard. And if you come up on him, you know, he could go by and, and make a decision. He was finding shooters. He was getting guys in their spots. Yeah, eleven assists. That's what he. That's what he does. I mean, he's he's in his ninth year or something up there. So he's. I mean, he, 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 he's been there forever. But he's. I mean, he has a national season championship. Vet. So, yeah, season vet. He was making good decisions, um, and then defensively, we know how Virginia is, Joe. I mean, Virginia plays discipline, discipline defense. Um, you know, they're on boxes and elbows. Uh, they're, they're daring you to go ahead and drive the lane because there's going to be help there waiting for you. Um, you really yeah. have to make shots against, against Virginia, and, and we weren't really able to do that until late. Uh, Virginia did a good job of, you know, forcing us to, to make tough decisions, putting us in tough positions. And, you know, I said I was talking to Brian on the post game. You know, this is a game where – uh, our veterans really had to show up and, and lead because they've been in these situations. They played against Virginia. They know what type of team it is. You know, even, you know, for the freshmen, when you, you, you watch the film and you see how Virginia is, it's different when you're playing against them in the game setting, no right? Question. You know, so they put us in position where, you know, we, we got caught with our head down driving to the basket, you know, help was there, you know, it turned, you know, defense into offense. Virginia was going down the other way. Uh, so it, it, it was really basically the whole game. It was it was Virginia's way of playing, right? They they turned the ball over, and then they got back, you know, offensively, uh, moved the ball. They were patient. They got good shots, uh, and, and then, like I said, towards the end is when it, it looked promising for us, Joe. I'm not going to lie. It, it, I guess it was like we were always. It was always in that 10 to 12 range, right, where we were at. Yeah. But the, at one point, we got it down to seven. And then at another point, we had a chance to get it down to, I believe it was three or four. And Joe Girard knocked down a three offensive foul called the, uh, on the big man Hema um, for, it was, I think it was an mm -hmm. offensive uh, or screen, movie screen, whatever. But that could have been four right there. So that could have been a big, that was a big uh, turning a big point. Momentum shift. A big, big momentum shift. But um, I thought the press really helped us. And, and um, speaking of the freshman, Malik Brown, you know, we've been talking about him, you know, early in the season. And he had, he's had some moments, bro, where he, he shows some promise, like just being active defensively, moving everywhere, um, you know, changing shots, um, getting his hands on the balls, getting deflection and, and being around the rim. You know, he really excelled defensively in the back of that zone, I think, um, just being active, getting deflections. Um, even though the, the zone was, yeah, even though the zone wasn't great, um, you know, he was a guy that really played good. I think he had, I don't know if he had ten points, eight rebounds. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but flirting with a double double, man. That's a good flirt. Yep, ten and eight. Exactly. And then he had moments on the press where he he was the guy in the double team to get the deflections and cause the turnover and and, and turn and make a play where a guy can just just get a layup. So um, he showed promise. Um, you know, Joe, Joe and Judy, you see their numbers. They don't look bad. I think it was 19 and 18. Yeah. Uh, Ju you know, Judy was 7 for 14. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And so from a stat standpoint, you look at them, you're like, 
I think Joe might have shot six for 17, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. You know what I mean? Against Virginia, yeah. where they're, they're making you shoot hard shots. Um, but a lot of that stuff didn't come to the end, bro. Like, in, in Virginia had most of their way for the, you know, up until, uh, you know, I don't know, the last seven minutes, maybe, you know, five, seven minutes. But the crazy thing is, Joe, this is how, how Virginia was playing. 11 minutes to go in the game. Virginia scores three field goals with 11 minutes to go in the game. The whole mm -hmm. So them not scoring the basketball, but them still being able to maintain that lead. They're getting stops. Yeah, they're yeah. getting stops yeah. the defensive end. So it really didn't start until, like, the, you know, the Syracuse really offensively yeah. doing their thing. Five minutes left, and, you know, put the press on. Joe starts hitting some threes. You know, Judah's getting to the <laughs> hole. We talked about Malik Brown. Um, and, and another, I think another key point in the game too, um, and this was out of, out of the team's control, Benny Williams, he wasn't playing, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, I, he make make that. That. I don't know why. How he, much do you I think, think he affects the game? He said non-related, non-COVID related illness or whatever, however they, they word that. Not yeah. COVID, but he was sick. But he's you know on the I mean? bench. But how, how much do you think, how much do you think that affects you know, it's a guy who averages, you know, eight, nine points a game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, obviously, you know, there's games where he shows up and he's who we believe him to be as far as potential-wise. He shows up in that sense. And, of course, there's games we spoke about consistency where, you know, he doesn't you know show up for us the way that he should. But how do you think his presence affects us? Because now him not being there obviously forces Malik Brown to play, which 10 and eight, two steals, one block, great stat line for a freshman getting in there um, and playing some meaningful minutes. But do you feel Benny affects the game any differently, him being in there, or it just really depends on the Benny that shows up on that day? Yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on the Benny that shows up. I, I, I'm starting to like Malik Brown more because of what he can bring. If he could bring a little bit more offensively, right now he's so raw. He he's just getting the you know if he if he do what he does. You know, obviously we're gonna have to have Jesse, Joe, and Judah do what they do offensively. And it, it, we missed Jesse this last game. You know what I mean? He he wasn't yeah. um, his, his typical self, and and we'll get to that. But, you know they they double teamed him well. Virginia sent it right away, uh, and then Jesse has to be able to make a quicker decision to either. You know, get that ball out, cut her down the middle, weak side, three-point shot, um, you know, or, or spin baseline or away from that double team and, and try to make a play itself. Uh, you know, you know, we'll get to that. But, you know, talking about Benny, I just think we've seen what he could do, Joe. You know, with that Boston College game, 17, what, 13 or 17 and 10, whatever it is. Yeah. But he you know, every time on the court, he's the most athletic player on the court. Like, so that makes a difference right there in itself. Like him being able to get up and down, him be able to jump over guys, get rebounds. Like he keeps plays alive, you know. And now we see he's added that little mid-range jump shot to when he knocks down mm -hmm. one or two. Confidence is going now. That's adding everything else in his game. Everything else in his game is is a little bit better, you know. So when he's on his game, when he's playing, <clears throat> bro, we're a different team. You know, no, we're no a different question. team. And, and I like what Malik Brown's bringing, but I, I you know. He's young. He's a freshman. He's showing promise. But Benny, like, if you going back to like, if he was consistent, we wouldn't even really need to be talking about a lot of these freshmen having to play a role or having to be, you know, get ten and eight to fill what Benny's not doing. You know what I'm saying? So he he's a guy yeah. that needs to be consistent, man. Like, I, he ha he changes the and game because, because looking at even looking at you know uh, team stat breakdown, you know what I mean. We we out rebounded them. Um, yeah, we shot better. Which than is promising. Three. That's Obviously, good to see. Uh, Virginia out rebounded yeah. Virginia. Yeah, you know we shot a better percentage from three. They sh they made more, but overall we shot a better percentage, uh, better field goal percentage. So everything was right there for us to to you know have a good outcome. Um, but again, I think Benny not being there and the Benny not being present hurt us in the sense that I feel like he, he, he could have, uh, you know, had a good game out there. You know, he's from that area, the DMV, you know, family in town. You know, guys always get, play a little better when they have people in the crowd cheering for him, especially on the road. So, um, not saying he plays we win, but it, it could have affected the game for sure in a positive manner. Yeah, and, and two, just kind of to speak on the stats, I don't know, Joe, like, I know you've been in a part of games where stats can be misleading. 
You know, you see this guy, he oh, he played well, he, he he shot the ball well, but then they still lose the game. Like this I think this is one of those games where stats could be a little bit misleading because we talked about like towards the end we really started you know making shots and and, and getting turn, turning them over and uh you know scoring out of that press but and, and and then that's you know we starting to play up and down a little bit more now we're getting easy but judah's getting out in transition you know getting layups getting to the basket getting to the free throw line um you know so <clears throat> you know that last five we we put ourselves back in it but it still yeah. always felt like you know all right we're not going to win it uh, so this was kind of a game where like stats were were misleading because we didn't play, bro. We didn't play good. We were sloppy. We turned the ball over. Um, you know, defensively, I think early on Virginia just kind of got where they wanted to. Uh, and and if you know if we play like this, bro, and we're gonna put ourselves in tough positions, man. Like, like playing like this, like even Virginia Tech coming in t- today. You know, it's game day to day, you know, play tonight. Yep. They're coming in losing four in a row. It, regardless, if we start they like need, that. They need one. They need one. So they're coming in. They're coming they need in one. Desperate. Desperate. So, like, they're, they're coming in firing yeah. from the jump. You know what I mean? We can't keep putting ourselves in position to where we're playing from behind and having to ha- have that big burst of energy with the last six, five, six minutes and having to mm-hmm. press and having to mm-hmm. do it. That's like, like we're in, like, survival mode all the time. You know what I mean? So like, like, and we know Joe. Like, when you get in survival mode, sometimes good shit happen. Like, you know what I mean? No, really, no question. Really, you know, we, you know, you, we get to scrap it. So, all right, you might, you might get yeah. your ass whooped. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> but fight or flight, man. If, but again, though, do you want to live your life in survival mode all the time, bro? No, you, you, you want to be able to have no. some comfort and some, and some peace of mind. Like, so for a basketball team. To play in those type that way every single time, that puts a lot of stress on you as a team to have to play like that. You know what I mean? Now you have to always play in that survival mode. Now we have to start from the beginning and, and be able to set the tone, like get one of those, and then you know they let's have the other team in survival mode. You know where they where they got to be scrambling, they got to change up their game plan, they got to put on a, a, a press and, exactly. and try to speed and try to speed us up. You know what I mean? We're, we're almost playing into, you know, the other team's hands. You, you know what I mean? And speaking on, let's let's talk about Jesse for a minute. I mean, he's again like we're not here to bash anybody, or it's 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 all con- constructive criticism. He's been one of the most consistent big men, not only in the ACC, but I think in the country. I think he, you know, he's he still had ten rebounds. I think he had. I don't know. He was only two for five. He only got five shots, and that yeah. could be. Yeah. That could be his fault, not demanding the ball. That could be, uh, you know, part of those guys not getting them to him enough. You know what I mean? And I think that was a little bit of the case because he really didn't start seeing the ball, Joe, t- t- till late second half when they when he went on that little run. He started getting there, getting to the free throw line. So even though that double team, just the way it was the 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 way that they were playing, in my guess, and in the chat, it said. Someone asked the question: Is it on the staff or is it on 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 Jesse that he looked so shocked every time the double team came? My take on that is: At some point, you got to make adjustments yourself. Okay, maybe whether or not it was discussed beforehand that they were going to double team and when he got it in the post, it's one of those things that all right, I know they're coming to double team, so now you know I got to start making like you said, making reads a little bit earlier. There's that. And then there's, let me see how else, let me, you know, duck in, let me get closer to the basket if I can, right under. So position, the double team position. becomes, yeah, positioning. So not a double team, you know, when you're double teaming on the block versus you can't really double team under the basket. He could, he's right there and he could go up. Now, when you're trying to post up from the block and you're getting double team, that's a lot more difficult. So I'd say, it would, it, I would say I, I would have to assume that they prepared him or told him. And even if they didn't, after the first all right, I'm shocked. The second one, all right, damn. Okay, let me get it together. By the third time, the double team, you should know what you got to do. Okay, this is what we sh- this is what we'll do. Make sure someone cuts. Maybe there could be a cutter on the weak side that comes when I catch the ball. Something, you know what I mean? That's um, what. But it's just what. Go ahead. No, 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 no. That's what you, I mean. You said it perfectly with it. Because first of all, the, the coaches, you know, they gave them the options of what what's going to happen as far when the double team comes. They're not going to obviously double from the passer side, right? Because then he's kicking it right back out to a shooter, right? So they're going to – where the double team is coming from that weak side every time. 
All right, so right away they're sending that weak side guy. So now Jesse has to make that read, okay? The weak side guy is coming in. Now that means that guy in the corner, right, will be open if he, and all he has to do is lift up and be in that vision to where yeah. Jesse can see, right? If they take that away and stay there, like you just said, cut that middle guy down right down. Now you cut that right middle down. guy. Now that weak side guy who's guarding that corner has to commit to that shooter, yeah. you know, or to that cutter, excuse me. He has to commit to that cutter. If not, we got a wide open layup, you know what I mean? Or we got a cut, boom, cut, and then he's kicking it back out to that corner guy. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like that's, the, those are the things. So it's not only on Jess or on Jesse, but it's on a teammate to be able to realize that like when they, they bring in that double team, where's that double team coming from? All right, boom, I got to cut down the middle. I'm wide open. You know what I mean? Now, if I don't get it, now that lift can come from the corner and that's where you get the, you know, that opposite, but in the corner right here where Shaq gets that, you know, yeah. gets that opposite. Yep. Shaq always just get that one hand and, and do that shit. Now, this is how Joe Girard got his first three. Jesse did it, hit him right there. Now, look, Virginia good, did a good job of scrambling and rotating, but now the rotations are always going to be a second late because everybody's, of course, to help, right? So now they're in scramble mode. Boom, swing, swing, wide open. So those are the opportunities you're going to get, but not, you got to be able to play it through depending on how the defense is going to guard it. You know what I mean? And two, yeah, Joe. Yeah, man, no doubt. W one more thing. For a big, now if I – you got to see the double team coming early, man. So what options do I have on the cut, on the opposite pass? Or now if the double team's coming high, high side, top side, let me get it real quick and spin baseline on them. And, and yeah. I'm going away. And quicker but you move, quicker decision. Yeah, but you gotta yeah, give we got to give them We also got to find them, too, though. E, we got to get them the ball yeah, down there, yeah. too. You know what yeah, I mean? So that's the yeah. first step is getting them the ball. It's kind of like, I like it. It's just like when teams blitz a pick and roll. They trap, right? It's going to catch you off guard the first time. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to be prepared for it. But when they trap, now you got to have maybe the corner guy sprint up to the middle or, you know, the big man doesn't really set a screen where he's going up and and, and slipping it. Now he's diving. You pass it, you know. Make one extra swing to the to the wing, then you could get a direct pass from the wing to the center diving. Little things and like that, that we gotta do. It's kind of exactly. So it's like I like to say it's kind of like Floyd, where he says, allegedly he never watched video on the on his opponent. He kind of adjusted as the fight went on, right? So whether that's yeah. true or not, the video that coach shows and prepares the staff, they prepare the, the video. It's just to give you an idea, a global exactly. idea of what's gonna be done, right? When you're in the game. All right, look, oof, okay, that caught me off guard, but now I got to adjust. It's all about adjustments at the end of the day. And they, they, they double team you one time, okay, cool. Now I got to be ready for it. I know it's coming. I know that what they do. I know, I see how they're rotating. So someone, you know, one of the point guards or whoever it could be at that point is like, okay, this guy's going, this is how they rotate. I got to find myself, put myself in this position in the line of vision of Jesse so that it might be a pass, extra pass to the corner, or whatever it may be, because – if two people are on one player, bro, someone's open, right? Someone's open. We got to yeah. get them in that scramble in, in, in that scramble mode. So, I mean, but again, they had to get them the ball a little bit, um, you know, so that we could we could have that done. Two for five, you know, four points, ten rebounds. I don't think he went to the free throw line at all. So, I mean, that's that's going to be tough when we talk about that balance that we need in a basketball game for us to you know be be good. And, and bro, think about it. So Jesse's all right. He's not the, the greatest catch it back to the basket guy, make a move and go right. A lot of the times, it's, if when he gets it and makes that quick decision, and then goes up high and uses that length and, and height over guys, he could finish or he gets fouled, and he's a pretty he's a pretty good foul shooter, right? But like you said, we need that balance to be able to keep guys honest, right? We, we To be able to give our shooters some space to get shots, to be able to get those defense and scramble, pump, you know, get two feet in the paint and then, and then make a decision, right? And, and Jesse's been giving us that consistency, I think, in this Virginia game, for most of the most part of the game, <clears throat> we didn't have that balance, right? You know, and, you know, it comes down to being able to take care of the ball too. 16 turnovers, when you don't, when you can't take care of the ball, you, you don't have possessions in half court, you're not going to be able to do anything regardless. But to be able to have that balance, you know, that inside-outside balance, keep the defense honest, keep the defense guessing, 
that's big time, you know, and, and Jesse, you know, he needs way more opportunities. He can't be two for five. He's, he's proven that he can be an offensive threat. Obviously, de defensively, he's one of the best big men in the country. Uh, I don't question. He blocking almost four shots a game, Joe. Yeah, just about. But he's been, he's been doing that since last year, right? He's shown that he can block shots. He's fouling out of way less games this year, so he's being very selective with challenging the shot, changing the shot, and blocking it. You know, I, I love what he's doing on the defensive end. Just got to get him, find ways. And of course, every game, like I love to say, bro, it takes on an identity of its own. Maybe this game was more fit for a guard to try to, but we got to find ways to get him involved just as a big man, period. We know how bigs are in the sense that, shit, they feel like they probably have one of the hardest jobs on the court. They got to rebound. They got to block shots. They got to set screens. You keep your big man happy, you know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll just be more beneficial for the team. You know how they say happy wife, happy life. Same thing. Hey, happy big man. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys go happy big man. You guys going to be in good shape, man. So got to find ways to keep him involved, keep him engaged. Because let's face it, they already don't get the ball a lot. Bigs traditionally, unless you're like MB. You know, we're talking, you know, high level bigs. But in college, there's not really someone that they're giving the ball to every single time. There's a select few. So to keep him engaged and keep him happy, the ball has to move. He has to, to not necessarily to score, but just feel involved within the offense. Okay, let me get a touch. I got a touch. I made a play. I got an assist. I was involved in that play. I was involved in us, you know, generating two points, three points on the board. So now I'm like, all right, it's a different energy that comes forth once you get involved in the offense, bro. So that's just something to think about. Um, you know, and it's a collective. The guards have to get it to him. He has to get good positioning, you know, so it's a collective of, you know, they got to work together to find out ways, especially in a time where it's like, we know we need Jesse. We see he's only taking two shots at this point. We got to try to get him a few touches. We got to try to That's get him, just, just give him a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Joe, you got to be the one. You know, you got to be the guy to step up and communicate to, hey, Judah, we got to get him a touch, man. He, he hasn't had one in a while. Yeah. Let him, let him make something happen. You know, and, and I think traditionally, Syracuse, bro, it, it's not it's, – it's a guard heavy. It's a forward heavy. Like, those guys are getting sure. the majority of the shot. They're scoring the majority of the points. But for this team in particular, I think we need Jesse to score a little bit. We need to have that balance because it's not – Joe can shoot the ball. You know, Chris Bell's shown that he can shoot the ball. You know, he's, he's mm -hmm. inconsistent inconsistent with the way he competes and the way he, you know, his effort defensively and in, 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 in knowing the zone, knowing the rotations. But, you know, Justin Taylor could hit some. But other than that, bro, we really don't have – Joe is our, is our three-point guy shooting the ball. Judah's getting to the basket mid-range. You know, he's, he's not a proven three-point shooter. So to have yeah. Jesse be able to score, he takes a lot of pressure off our guards as well. Now – Okay, a guy that's not a proven three-point shooter, is it easier to shoot a contested or is it, you know, easier to shoot an open? It's probably easier to shoot an open. So, because now, Jesse scored, they have to ease up a little bit. You know what I mean? So you're going to get more opportunities, Chris Bell. Joe, you're going to get easier shots. You know, Judah, you're going to yeah. be able to, you know, get those cuts down the middle and, and, and those penetration and, and, and touching the paint and making plays. So we, for this team, I, I just think we, we need Jesse, man. We need him to get some touches. We need him to feel the ball engaged. Like you said, Joe, it's if a big man is engaged, he's doing more on the other end that we need. And he's the best, he's the best shot blocker in the country. We need him engaged on that end because without our defense, we're not doing anything. It, it, we can talk about offense all day, Joe. Defensively, if we're not able to get stops, and we weren't able to get any stops, I'm telling you, Virginia was passing that ball anywhere they wanted to in, in you know, majority of that game. Right? Majority. Yeah, defense and, and is non-negotiable, man. Non-negotiable. A lot of – and even, Joe, even though, like, they missed shots, a lot of them were, like, open shots. I, t I mentioned they had only, like, three field goals in the last 10, 11 minutes or whatever. They were getting open looks. They were just – Right. It, we weren't there. We were standing still. We're not active. Like that's that is the zone, Joe. You you if you're not moving, if you're not active, if you don't know where you're supposed to Any be. Any defense, no question. You got to do your job. You got to do your job, and it, and it, it seems simple. If I'm thinking as an individual, okay, the ball is here. I got to go here. Like I'm doing my job. I know that I am. 
if everyone just did their job, of course, it's easier said than done. That's just historically speaking, any level, man to man, zone, whatever it may be. Um, it, we'd be in good shape. You got to do your job. There was a question in the chat that says, I'd love to hear how you guys prepare, especially in the zone for a guy like Mutt. So I feel uh, Virginia Tech is going to run their offense through. Um, I see Mutz, he's averaging 13. He's shooting 40% or better from the three-point line. Um, he's averaging eight rebounds. I mean, for guys that are shooters, I remember, you know, uh, doing the scouting and, you know, Villanova, for a team like Villanova, a team that only had a few guys that, that shot, like a Notre Dame that had Kyle McElarney. I remember the zone just having to, we just had to push the zone up a bit. But the difference is today's game is that guys are shooting 40 footers. So you don't want to push the zone so far out ahead that now you're, you know, it's too much space that you're giving maybe a high post pass because we can't all be up in the zone. Right. So we got to obviously the special guys on in, in defense that we know we got to pay special attention to. Right. And obviously he's effective. He's on the rebounds. He's making he's shooting 40 or better from the three. He's shooting under 65 percent from the free throw line, which I always found, you know, that, you, you know, you shoot well from the three, but not so well from the line. But I mean, he's obviously a proven shooter and one of their and their senior leader, one of their senior leaders. So um, I think we just pay special attention to him. Um know where he is at all times in the zone you know what i mean identifying him which comes down to communication if he's cutting through you know they want to play the back of the zone area where they always send somebody you know uh, corner to corner just trying to overload a side um it's just about communication big talk from the middle guy just letting them know the opposite forward there's someone in the corner and vice versa so it's just about knowing where he's at in the zone other than yeah, that there's not much preparation you could do hey if he's gonna score he's gonna score you know what I mean? Like, he, we can't stop. He, he's he's their guy. He shoots 45% from three. He's going to score the ball. But special attention. What can we do? Let's take away two or three of his attempts. That could be the game changer. You know, because, again, they're, they're coming in here hungry. They need they need a win. We ha So that's what it is. It's not like we're coming in. It's two teams that are 9-0, a 4-0 in the conference, whatever it may be, where it's like, okay, what? nah. We need a win. They need a win. So now it comes down to, you know, when talent meets talent, like, talent isn't enough anymore. You know what I mean? So what are you going to do to win? What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do extra to win? So that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, and, and uh, like you said, you're, you're, span, you're, excuse me, you're paying special attention to him. You know, you're shading over to his side. On the catch, you're there automatically. You, you know he, he has a quick release, so you're there. And now it's up to them to adjust. Okay, they're shading over. We're going to send that guy a little bit higher on the flash. You know, th things like that. Now when they adjust, we adjust. Game within the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's Like you yeah. said, it's all about adjustments. You said it in the beginning, Joe. The coaches give you the game plan, to, you know, they're, from the scout, from, from the watching the game film over the, uh, you know, uh, previous games of, that they played you know all the sets that they run there's what they do against this type of defense what they do against the zone they're prepping you for that right so you know what to expect so when you can see it okay this could happen but now the game within the game a smart player is going to make an adjustment off of that oh he sees that i'm gonna go ahead counter with this now you and now yeah. it's your turn now it's up to you make the adjustment you good old chess match Good, good old chess match. You, you got to be able to make decisions. That's that's what it is now. You know, it sounds easy, right? Make, oh, just make a decision. You got to do it within the flow of the game when it when stuff is fast paced. You know what I mean? That's yeah. you, you only get a couple seconds to make a decision. You know what I mean? When when something happens on the other end, you know, you you make a mistake defensively. It affects your mental coming back. Now that decision is even harder to make. Like it's a lot of uh, extra stuff that comes comes with it, bro. It's not just go out there and yeah, for it, sure. it, it, decision like people say it's it's a lot involved, but great players are able to do that, right? It, you know, great teams are able to do that. Block that other extra stuff out that doesn't mean anything and, and get the job done and, and make the best decisions. So uh, defensively we 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 just gotta know where he's at. You know, we got to talk. I, I think a big thing, Joe, you said from that middle, the communication is so important. It, I want to talk about communication real quick because it's something that I think is lacking, uh, not only on this team, but I just think overall, you know, like who, who's that guy to get everybody together, you know, keep everybody engaged when, when times are tough, when, when 
you know, like you said, when Jesse's not getting the ball, who's the guy to go over to, hey, Jesse, come on, get that position. You know, we're trying to find you. We're trying, we need to get, we haven't yeah. got it to you. But we need you to help me out, get position to where I could get it to you. You know, tell me, talk to me. You know, come set this hard screen so I could get open. He's on my tail. He's he's not he's not getting exactly. off. Like I need I need you to set one for me. You know, Judah and Joe at the top of the zone. Hey, we gotta slap hands every time. We gotta huddle at the free throw line. I think I think that's important. And you know, at times, yeah, we can see it, but I think the consistency is not there like it like it should be, especially for a team that's young has a lot of young guys. Like communication is super key, especially in the zone. If you're not talking, if you're not active in the zone. It's not going to work, but 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 basketball is a is a game of communication. You you have yeah. to be able to talk on that out on that floor, especially when stuff go gets bad, you know, or, or you're turning the ball over. You're on the road. You're in an environment where it's loud, and the younger guys aren't used to it. You, you what's what's your what's your take, bro, on that? And 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 just what's your take on the communication with this team so far this year, and, and how you think it's been? <clears throat> not to bring up the past, right? Because we want to stay in the present. But we had the same, we, we brought up the same kind of, I guess, issues last year, that there wasn't enough people communicating, um, you know, at the right times. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's easy to talk when things are good and we're up 10, 12, whatever it is. But when, when we really need to communicate and lock lock in with the five guys around the court, we need to see more of that. We need And... and um, it has to come once again. For one, it always should come from your guards, right? I feel like that's very important for because your guard is usually your leader on the court. He's the one that gets guys in line. He orchestrates the offense. Defensive side, I guess it's more of the big man because he's the anchor. But I think it should, it should always come from your guards, and that's always going to be key, bro. Always. Always. And I mean, it doesn't always have to be the five guys in the huddle. It could be the guard talking to you know, a, a wing, then he's talking to the big man, but always communicating with his guys, making sure he's checking the temperature with everybody throughout the course of the game, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, he's good. I can see he's, okay, he's solid. Let me go check on Benny real quick. Ah, uh, shit, okay, Benny's, ah, uh, Benny needs a shot. Let me try to find him. Okay, shit, we need to find Jesse. So just talking, and then, you know, at free throws, the huddle up at free throws is good, just to say, you know what? God, you know, it's cool. You know, we're all right. Just to let guys know we're okay. We're not, you know, it's nothing. To, we still got a lot of basketball left to play. Let's get a couple stops. Let's get a couple good shots. You know what I mean? Which you take a bad shot, that's as good as a turnover, right? You get a bad shot, one and done. They get back on, you know, they go boom, transition. They get a basket. That's that's draining. So depending on the course of the game, it's a different communication that has to be happening. But overall, they need to be always talking, checking in just to make sure everything is straight. And again, it has to come from one of our guards. Um, you know, if, if they could do that a bit more, that'd be great. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the five-man huddle every time. You know, it could be the individual talks on the side, just making sure somebody has to make sure that four of the guys on the court are doing okay. You know, that's very important. And, and, and two, I think it's important that it comes from – the player is not always the coach, right? We need this within the team. Yeah. Like, you know, you hear it from Coach Bayheim over and over. Like, guys are like, it's just like repetitive. All right, you need it. You need to have it from the guys going out, going out to war with you. You know what I mean? You got to hear it for them. Like, hey, coach, like the saying is, we got to do this, man. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, you, it, it means more. It means more coming from your partner right there with you. You know what I mean? He, he on, on the floor with you. I just think communication. Bro. It's such a vital it's key bro. Like it. it's key it's key bro and sorry to cut you off but it's just like you know i don't know the, the i don't know the first thing about war and i don't want to compare obviously you know <laughs> if people want to get technical i'm not comparing basketball to war bro but it's a battle so to speak right you're going to compete against another team you're trying to come out victorious so in some sense it has some type of similarity Right, but when you go to war, me and you, e, we're, we're in war. I know that one thousand percent today. We go to war anywhere, anywhere. I could trust that you're going to be there for me. Right, we've built that trust over the course of years. Whatever the case is, when we played, whatever it was, I knew that you would be there. So when I'm in that foxhole, bro, like it's me and you. Okay, I'm straight. I don't know if they know that they're straight when they're out there. Those five guys in orange. You know what I mean? I don't know if they're that well connected and that locked in 
to know that, okay, look, I could look to my left, I could look to my right, and these guys for sure, I can trust that you're going to go rebound for me. I can trust that you're going to make the extra. You know, these the, the little things that we need to really trust, bro, because all it so takes I is do one slip to get your head knocked off. So I can do my job. I got to be able to trust you. And I think that that's the piece, and it comes with experience. It comes with, you know, there's, there, you know, they're young, et cetera, et cetera. But they got to be able to, like, my seniors, the seniors should be, look, Joe, Jesse, you know, you got to talk to them boys and tell, look, I got to be able to trust that you're going to rebound. I can't do it all by myself. Chris, I need you on the boards with me, please. You know, Benny, I need you to, whatever it may be. Judah, I need you to. They got to communicate that. They got to be able to trust one another because they're going to battle, bro. It's only them. It's five on five. I don't care what's going on. It could only be five players on each side at the same time, bro. So those five guys that are on the court, that trust and that, that build and that accountability is built over the course of since July or whenever it is that they were together till this point. So whoever the five are on the court are at any particular time, I know I'm straight. No matter who's on the court, coach should feel like, I know these guys are going to work hard as shit. They're going to trust one another. They're going to do, 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 do. But it has to be that. I don't think it's, I think we're missing that little key element that's going to say, oh, okay, no, nah, the five guys on the court, they're ready to rock at any given time. I don't care if it's goddamn whoever. All five guys are ready. Doesn't mean you win, bro, but if I could trust you, that that's taking a a lot of pressure off of me if I could just trust that if I miss if I fuck around and, and 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 anticipate a pass and shoot the gap and I miss it as a forward Jesse you're right there boom rotation boom 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 and we're all in sync and it's and it come on now you know what I mean For I gotta real. trust you I gotta trust you and you know accountability you I mean you hit it on the head you, you got when I think of, of trust and and me trusting somebody especially in a sports setting right having the trust of you of your yeah of your teammate. i think of like you said accountability and being honest with me you know what i mean let, let letting me know the truth right like keeping 100 with me like if i need to yeah. hear something where i ain't doing you got to tell me like i'm not doing my job you, you got to let me know you got to hold me accountable i'm gonna hold myself accountable I got to hold you accountable as well. Like if we all do that, if we all on the same page with that and we don't, you know, uh, get offended or, or, you know, take yeah. it personally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Then, then, then we're going to be better because now it's going to be like, all right, I got to look at myself and I got to fuck, fuck. I ain't, I ain't doing my role like I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. I mean, no way ain't lying. You know what I mean? This is a guy who, who who's a senior telling me who's been through it, who, who's experienced these situations, these games. So it's coming yeah. from him. Damn, I better get on my shit. You know what I mean? And, you, and and then as and then speaking for Joe, I can't be afraid to do that. Like I, I can't I can't think about. Oh man, he's probably gonna get upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I shouldn't. I you know I wonder how he's gonna. Feel. It's not because you doing it for the team. For the it, it's it's all for the greater good. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like and you can't and, and, and a good leader, a great leader is not afraid to do that. He's not afraid yeah. of those feelings that are gonna feel about him because at the end of the day it is what it is. It's for the it's for the greater good of the team. And a lot of times I am sure it's it's been plenty examples of where, you know, great leaders have people not want to mess with them no more. You know I mean or, or and this goes Joe, when I'm saying leaders, I'm talking about head coaches great players, CEOs, For sure. I'm with you. Yep. business leaders. They they've had they've had to walk in and be like, man, this is what it is. Like this is this is what, what has to get done. Like to build this. You know what I mean? Been here, done that. I'm I'm letting you know I gotta hold you accountable. If you can't do this, then what what are we doing? You ego can't play. To, you gotta leave the ego at the door. You gotta leave that ego at the door. Man, I was just I was just um yesterday watching something about the ego, man, just how the guy was saying, you know, we all have that that in in the back of our head. It's always talking. It like it never stops, right? It's not. It, it never stops. It's just it's just how it is. That's 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 how the ego. But then it's like a a bigger part where it's called like the, the self, to where that mm -hmm. operates out of out of like love and kindness and generosity and yep. and that's where the cr the creative ideas and where you can get shit done. And you know what I mean. It, once you when you're always in the ego mind state, it's always like. 
it's always got to be about you. Everything is personal. Like when people come and ask you, it's like, ah, this, and it's always personal. You know what I mean? So, to, and, and, and we've been like indoctrined with that, right? That's been kind of like our society, yeah. like put that in us because it's like, it's all, it's a me society. It's, it's just how it is. You know what I mean? So when you get with a great team, you find that that ego can dissipate. Like you, you don't have it anymore. That's what the great teams are able to do. But it's t- it's hard, bro. Especially, bro. No, Nowadays, is, social is. media. It's a, it, 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 you got your camp. You got your people who are telling you this and that. Man, you in there one year anyway. It don't even matter if you win. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't even. So matter now you're not you... even going into it. You're going into it different. And not to not not to, bro. Even it's the NIL. I, I was. Yeah, no, nah, the NIL speed it. So now, nah, you know, what's crazy is, bro, and it's unfortunate. Shout out to the NILs. You should be able to get paid for your image and likeness. No doubt. No doubt. You know what I mean? But what that could cause as well, and I'm not saying this is the – I'm not talking Syracuse basketball at this point, but I know for a fact there are teams in the country that are dealing with, nah, fuck ED. How are you getting paid 10000 more dollars than me for this and I'm doo 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 <laughs> So now there's like – we're teammates, but now I'm hating on you because you're NIL. That may affect me making an extra pass, bro. Like, the fuck it. He's already getting 10 more thousand. I'm going to go ahead and take this shot. Because if I make this, now if I score more points than him, you know, I might maybe, you know, who knows? Like, maybe my NIL, maybe something else might come to me. So that's just, it's just a whole lot of different dynamics going on. But we got to always reel it in and remember we're here to for one common goal to win basketball games to be the best basketball players that we could become with a potential to win a national championship i would have to assume bro i mean i'm not even going to talk about the lower you know divisions and things like that but you go to these power five conferences every team in that joint is trying to win a national championship no one's planning to be like yeah let's go ahead and win the nit at the end of the year Let's go win the CBI or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> right. CBI, Yo, bro, what the we're, fuck we're is that? Gonna, we're, <laughs> the fuck we're going that to try to win. Type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try to win the national championship, bro. We're trying to get to the March Madness, get a great seed, and, and bring a fucking trophy back to our campus. You know what I mean? So we just got to keep in basketball and remember what we're all here for. Because like you said, it's tough. You're only here for a year. Man, you better than him. He taking X, Y, Z amount of shots. You only took eight last game. Next game, you got to take four more. So, we got to just remember why we're here, bro. Ubuntu. I'll never forget. I mean, that that was something that the Boston Celtics did in 2008 when they won. But when I got there in 2012, they brought in, you know, this dude from Africa who came and he, you know, explained the word Ubuntu to us, which is basically being, for a team and a team asking, it's, it's just being selfless, you know, um, giving up something for your brother to advance. Maybe like for, for this to work, I got to shoot less. He got to shoot more, you know, whatever it is. Like I'm here. We're all, we're 12, we're 12 individuals, but we're here as one. You know what I mean? So that's what Ubuntu was about in a nutshell. Yeah, obviously it helped them win a cha- championship in 2008. You could hear to this day, KG talk about it, Paul Pierce talk about it. And when I got there in 2012, you know, I had to do a presentation on Ubuntu. Basically, they asked me, the veterans said, you, you Fab Mello, Jared Selinger, you guys all got to give us a, a little oral presentation, I guess, about Ubuntu, but three different things. You guys can't say the same stuff. So whatever, we, we did it. Um, and that's what it comes down to, bro. Like, the greater good of the team. We cannot be in here thinking as individuals because once you start doing that, you already lost the battle because now you got yeah. 10 guys with 10 different things going on instead of 10 guys thinking the same thing coming together. So as a basketball team, our basketball team, any sport, that should be the mindset. We're trying to win. That's our one common goal. We're trying to win. And then from winning, we all look good, bro. Cause let me tell you, no one likes a loser. There's been guys overseas averaging six points that make 250, $275,000 a year because they are known to win wherever they go. They bring, they bring winning habits, winning attitude, championship pedigree. And that's why they get paid. So it's very tough to, to understand. I think to internalize and really grasp what's being said but bro when you're that young you know it's a lot going on like you said outside voices this person saying that we're all we're, we we are all we got once we're in that locker room once we're in that gym once we're in practice there's nobody else going through what you guys are going through as a group 
to be able to come infiltrate and hurt what you guys are trying to build, bro. We're in it. 12. No one else was up 6 a.m. doing individuals with you, running with Ryan, getting with Griff, getting yelled at by the coaching staff, throwing up, whatever it may be, putting them arms in on a shooting gun. It was only you and your brothers. So to let anybody else affect what you guys got going on, bro, is insane to me. You know what I'm saying? You deal with it internally as a group. You don't let no one disrupt what you guys got going on. You guys deal with it as brothers. Because at the end of the day, you guys yo, you guys are trying to build something, bro, special. You know what I mean? And that's what they got to remember. At the end of the day, we're trying to build something special. We have a special group. Everybody counted us out because we're young already. You know what I'm saying? They already said Syracuse ain't going to be shit because we're too young. Right? But we got three three leaders. We got we got <clears throat> Samir. We got Jesse. We got Joe. You know, even if you want to call Bowl. Bowl is a senior, if I'm not mistaken. He's a part of that energy. leadership. Great energy. Great energy. You know what I mean? Great energy. Great energy. You know, he's a part of that leadership, bro. Them four, six, six freshmen plus a transfer. So you might as well call him a freshman as well because he don't know Syracuse basketball. Um, you can't let nobody disrupt what you guys got going on. We're in this shit together, bro. Hey, I tell you what, man. You you tuned in. You you, you tuning in to us chopping it up. You gonna learn some basketball shit. That's a, that's a fact. You are gonna learn some hoop shit now. But you gonna learn question. some real life shit. I'm gonna tell you this. It's just about everything that we talk about. You can implement it. It's it's goes into life shit, man. Like if you <clears throat> workplace, you know, dealing with people, relationships, whatever it is. I'm not trying to make the show into a goddamn. Whatever this is, it. <laughs> we chopping it, it up. Stuff. We chopping it up. When you, when you keep it real, and it, it, it's all experiences that we've had. You know, we're speaking when 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 we talk about you know this hoop shit. We played in those games. We've been in those situations. We've had those experiences. We're speaking from it. Yep. You know what I mean. So I think that basketball shit has allowed us to be in situations in life where people would never be able to get to experience because of the people we meet, you know, the places we're able to go, you know what I'm saying? So we, we've got to experience some pretty cool life shit as well, no you doubt, know, and no doubt. with different people and, 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 you know, going through different things. So, man, if you tuning in and you listen to us chopping it up, come on, man. Don't tell me you're not learning some shit or are we trying to. Hey, hey, you learn, <laughs> you learn, you learn some shit. Hey, hundred percent. They learn some shit. But, E, real quick, we got about 10 or so minutes left in the game. I'm in the game, dog. You see I'm locked the fuck in. We got yeah, 10 in the game. minutes left we in the show. We in the fucking game. We right now. We in this shit. Yeah. We in it. We in it. Um, and it's the game. It's game day, right? It's game day. So just game speaking day. on game day, was there anything that you did? Were you a superstitious type of player or guy back then, now? Are you superstitious at all? So, no, so I mean, you know. You know not really, bro. I mean, I guess, you know, like, it's not like I'm not doing the same meal. I'm not doing all, I, you know, I want to get my rest. I want to get there early. I was always a guy who got there two hours ahead, two and a half. I like to get in, get shots, make sure my, you know, the, the shots feeling good mm -hmm. getting into my rhythm. I guess if you call it a superstitious, it's not, it's a more of a routine, you know, routine, that that's my routine right. Get there early, you know, just in my head, you just be thankful for the opportunity and, and, to be able to do it again, you know what I mean? Because it's because yeah. we all know this game could be taken away from you quickly, injury, whatever it is, uh, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's my routine. I didn't really didn't have a superstition, I guess. How about you? Nah, no, no superstition on my, my on my part either. But routine wise, I needed my pregame nap. I don't care oh, what's yeah. going on, unless we play. Unless we played at noon, then obviously you're waking up, waking out, getting out the bed, and going to the dome. That's pretty much it at that point. You know what I mean? We had a seven thirty in the breakfast. morning. Yeah, seven thirty breakfast. We have to eat. You know, uh, four hours before the game. You know, because you know yeah. they died the digestive system and whatever else technicalities. You know, they had it all down for us. Um, <laughs> but, but any game that's any game that was in the evening, bro, I'm taking me a nap. You know, I got to get my pregame nap in. I get to the dome early as well. Uh, maybe not two hours early. Maybe maybe my senior year I was getting there a little earlier. But get my shots up, go in the locker room, chill, watch TV. ESPN is always on in the locker room. Um, I go back out for my individuals with my group, the Fords. 
that was pretty much it. But I always listened to something mellow. You know, a lot of guys like to listen to music. These are the days where we had the beats pill or the beat studio headphones and all that. But um, I always would be listening to like, to be honest with you, like Michael Jackson, um, you know, Whitney Houston, like some real mellow type, some you know common. What I'm saying music, you know, common, <laughs> common, that, yeah. that, that nice poetry, you know what I'm saying? Nothing too crazy, bro. I just want to really feel that peace and calm. Um, I get my mm-hmm. shots up with the, the, the big basketball, which is like, you got to damn near shoot a perfect shot for it to go in. So I'd go ahead and do my form shooting, my uh, catch and shoot, mid range, my threes. What I always found, and, and that was my routine, but just thinking about my routine, what was always dope for me to see was when I went back in the locker room for the last time uh, before we came back out for warmups, it would damn near be empty in the dome. Like, and 20 minutes later, that thing was, whew. Like that feeling when you, when you run out the locker room, bro, and you just dapping everybody on the side, and you know what I mean? It, it was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. How could you not wake up for that? How could you not go into the dome and just be ready to rip someone's fucking head off? You know what I mean? It was, it was <laughs> yeah. a great feeling, bro. <laughs> uh, running, out that, running out that tunnel, you got both sides, you know what I mean? That, yep. it, in between the warm-ups of, you know, in the game, you, you know, you sign a little autographs. At, yep. You know, after you might hit them one, two, oh, all right, boo, I'll be back. And, uh, you know, you got to come and get it. I got to go. Hit the I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Yeah. Because you know? well, I know you're going to be waiting outside after anyway. It's going to be a couple of you waiting outside. Right yeah. in the stadium control. You're going to be right there. Hey, but uh, shout out to Q's too. Shout out to Q's because yeah. the love is real. I went to the game and I'm bringing it back. I went to the game on New Year's Eve against BC. They got to win. There's no love like Syracuse love, bro. You know, pictures were being taken. I'm talking about, you know, parents taking me taking pictures with their kids. But it's like, come over here, mom, dad. Like, you you know me for real. Your kids don't. No doubt. I'll get a picture, too. You feel me? Like, let's go. Let's yeah, get a yeah. picture. The love, the, the love was, the love was like, real. The kid's like, wow, who, who the fuck is it? I'm yeah, like, who, who is this? this? Shit, right. I'm trying to, you know. That's, 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 that's funny, bro. That's funny. So, bro. Last question before we get up out of here, um, and I and personally I'm optimistic, but it was from the chat. I'm, I'm just getting to it now. Can Q still make attorney run? Do they, are they going to be you know NCAA attorney bound, or you know are they looking at an NIT season? You know what you thinking right now? What's the record? What's our overall record? We're ten and what six? I believe three and two in the in the ACC. Ten and six, yeah. And three and two in the ACC, we have, I don't know, 16, 17 games left. Something like that. What, what are your thoughts, bro? What do you think? Um, I'd say that I'm, I'm very optimistic just because I think we could turn a corner at any point. Um, we just got to figure it out entirely. You know, I think we're almost there. But, um, you know, we would have to do extremely well in the month of January, February. Like we have some meaningful, we have, we have to get some big wins. You know, I think we play, we play Duke at home, Carolina at home. Like we have some big wins that we would have to, that would really impact our, uh, I guess the ability to make the tournament, those games that count. Yeah. We, we could do it. We could do it, man. We could do it. Uh, I, I, I always pray. I mean, obviously I might be in bias. I might be in, but I do really feel like we can make a tournament run, like if we just figure it out. But we don't have much time, right? This month is going to be very indicative of what happens. Um, and that's what I say. You know, we, we could make a tour. Obviously, and then you got the ACC tournament where anything is possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You look back, at, you look back at, at my junior year, which was 10-11, Kemba Walker. They went nine games straight, bro. You know what I mean? Like if they don't win that – if they don't win that – Big East tournament, I don't believe they make the NCAA tournament that year. And then, or they'd be a very low seed, you know, and they went on and they won, you know, they won six games or whatever it is in the NCAA tournament, national champions. Fucking Campbell gets picked in the, you know, a lottery pick after that. So I, anything is possible, you know, but again, it has to be 12 guys thinking as one, not 12 individuals thinking for themselves. No, I, I agree, bro. I'm optimistic about it. It's still, it's still a lot of time left, and I just think overall 
there's not really a dominant team, especially in the ACC. It's it's a little bit down. You're going to have your, you know, Dukes and North Carolinas. You know, Clemson obviously is undefeated. They're playing well. You know, Pittsburgh is up there. We, we play them one more time. But we can win any game. We can win any game. We we have. I think you know we have a presence in the middle. We, we got guys who can make plays. Judah and Joe. You know, I think the young guys are starting to come along. We just, like you said, we need Benny. We need that one consistent forward to, you know, bring us some every single game. I think that'll put us over the edge. You know, as far as winning games. You know, defensively rebounding, they have to be there. You know, I think from the, from the beginning to now, we've improved as a team. We've gotten a lot better. Obviously, you know, we've had sure. some, some um, you know, some reach, uh, I guess some back steps or, or some mishaps, however you want to say it. Um, but we are able to ca- find some good points always, you know what I mean? Even going to Virginia, you know, we, we won the rebounding battle. You know, we, you know, we continue to fight. We didn't give up. I'm optimistic. I think, you know, we got to win some games. It, it, the time is now, Joe. Obviously, we don't have any any more time to waste. The time is now, you know, so we keep talking about putting together and getting better. You got to do it. We got to win games, you know. But, you know, with the time left, with the amount of games we have, I'm, I'm not saying we can't do it. We could, we could put together a, a string of victories. We got the ACC tournament. That's wide open. You know, we got the talent to do it. We got talented players. We do. You know, it's about yeah, being disciplined. Being consistent defensively, communicating offensively. Let's try to make it as easy, easy as possible. If we can get up and down and play like that and transition, get easy buckets, that's what we want to do. You know, half court sets, let's execute, let's get easy open shots for guys. You know, and make and make those decisions and reads. But you know, I'm not I'm not uh putting ourselves out, out of the running at all. So let's let's start tonight, bro. Let's start tonight against Virginia well, Tech. Let's do Keep it. it going. Yeah, let's Saturday, get another let's run over Dave. And uh, yeah, we we gonna make it happen, and and we will be back next Wednesday, uh, next Monday. I think we're doing a live show Monday. We got a live show at 10 a.m. with with our guy uh, Pat, who's a former walk on. He has some some good stories about you know how he used to be a manager turned walk on. Um, so I was able to to um, you know be there on staff when Pat was Pat was on the team. So. That'll be good, man. Looking forward to it next Monday. We're going to get it in. Appreciate everybody tuning in. You already know what it is. Deep with Joe. We signing out. I'll at you.